my guys, welcome back. I hope you guys are having a great Monday. As you can see, we're outside Sunday afternoon. Daylight savings has happened and it's already five o'clock, but look at how much light we have outside. You have no idea how excited that makes me and how happy that makes me. We can now, we can, we can, well, not that we couldn't work all hours of the night, but we got, we got light, we have daylight, which just makes everything so much more happier. Can anybody agree with me? It's just, it's just a different feeling. Winter is finally coming to an end, but we've got the frame completely done. Uh, I really didn't want to stick the camera out there while we were grinding away, painting away. Uh, so it's already done. I'll show you that. So really it's all in the prep work when it comes to getting your frame nice and cleaned up. You know, you got your wire wheel, your brushes, you know, your uh, scuff pads, and then you know blowing all the crap out use the uh, compressor over there now if you had more space more time different setting you could really use a soda blaster a sand blaster get it extremely perfect this frame like i had mentioned already had a rubberized undercoating on it so i didn't really want to strip all that off where it was still good so we kind of just went over the rough spots and then went over it with this stuff i've used this stuff quite a bit again another rubberized you know just spray undercoating if this frame was completely bare and I was and it had nothing on it, we would have used like a chassis saver, a Pore 15, uh, something that's a little bit more brush on. But seeing that this one was already pretty much done, we just kind of went over the rough spots and cleaned it up and got it back to back to good. So it's done. We're good to go. We can now push this back inside and then we can start installing our hitch. All right, so seeing that we can't push that thing in by ourselves, we might as well just leave it outside. What we're gonna do is we're gonna just install the hitch maybe outside, because I think I might actually wanna spray the undercoating over top of that gray so it all matches. So what we got here is our B&W gooseneck hitch model 1313 uh, as you can see it's really only like five pieces it's two side braces the lateral bars and the plate in the middle so uh, we might as well just pop this thing outside i don't think it's going to take too too long i'm just going to read over the instructions but uh really pretty easy install i'll go over it as we're doing it or maybe just at the end because who needs a full explanation so i'll give you some tips and tricks along the way and we'll get that baby installed Let me stop here for one quick second and let me explain some stuff before I get too far ahead of myself and then we're pretty much done with the project. So where we're at right now is we got our two cross beam plates and we have that loosely, all the hardware is just loose right now. That's kind of what we're figuring out right now. And then this is your main piece that bolts to the uh, front and the side. And then you got your side plates here. So what we're running into, and it's really nothing wrong with the kit. I just want to try and improve if I can. So they give you, you know, grade eight bolts, but they give you, you know, the, the, the zinc uh, hardware. Whereas I would normally, like to use all grade eight hardware. So I've ha I have about half of it. See, these were all this zinc stuff, and I believe it's zinc, I don't know. I, that's what they say in the store anyway. It's, it's, it's the silver stuff. It's the silver stuff and then the silver. Uh, see, I already switched this one out to all grade eight, but you can kind of see right here, this is kind of what they provide you with. So what I wanna do is I have about half the hardware to convert everything over just to grade eight, all gold stuff. Um, and that's really what I wanna do. Now, the second issue is, and again, this is not really an issue. This is just me thinking it could be improved upon, is they give you, here, here's one. They give you this carriage bolt with this uh, little fish plate here. And what you have to do is from back here, you pretty much fish this through with these little wires that they give you. You fish it through and then they have you, let me take this out because this is what we're going to be going to. Put that there. So what they have you do is fish this through the frame. Let me do that. So imagine this was on the inside of your frame here. This bolt is sticking out 
and then by the time this wedges down, this kind of nails the bottom of the frame so you can actually tighten it up. Now, I don't know if every truck is like this, but if you look on the other side here, you can see that there's a hole all the way through the frame. Now, um, I've actually heard of people doing this before, is drilling a hole all the way through to get both sides of that. I feel like it's a much stronger option than just this little fish plate through the side and through one of it. So I'm actually gonna run, um, this is a half by 13. All of their hardware is half by 13. That is a four inch long and it is just long enough. And I got these really nice, massive, massive thick uh, flat washers here. And you can kind of see a four inch bolt is almost long enough by the time you push that through. So we're gonna go get five inch long ones, that way the uh, lock washer and the nut can fully fully seat. But I think that is what we're gonna do instead of running that inside design and swap everything over to grade eight, that way it all matches. Uh, but this is pretty much the final resting plate, uh, final resting spot. Um, the only thing they do recommend you doing, and obviously this is a lot easier to see out of the truck, but uh, to measure, imagine if your bed was here, they want you to measure from a cross beam, a cross beam to here or something. That way you know that it's not slightly shifted or anything like that. So we'll take a measurement from here to here just to make sure that it's exactly perfect and then we'll tighten everything up and then that's pretty much it for the install they got their 30k ball here sits inside like so once the the only thing that we really have left to do is install our handle that goes on the other side that way you can pull that in and out and then we need to drill a hole in our bed and hopefully <laughs> it lines up. They give you a measurement up and across and you hope that it's right. So that's the plan. We're gonna go swap out that hardware and then we'll catch back up with you guys. guys so we are back at the shop I don't even know where we left off yesterday but it is the next day uh, we went and got our grade 8 hardware got that all put in and it just so happens that on the way back to the shop we pretty much have to go right past my house so we decided to stop in have dinner sat down on the couch and everybody in the world knows how that goes and we ended up staying home so we're back at the shop we're gonna wrap up the B&W gooseneck hitch install today like I said we already have all of the hardware it's all loose it's all there, it's all pretty much hand tight, but we can still maneuver it around just a very, very little bit. Uh, we're gonna cut the hole in the bed now, and then the bed, um, I'm sorry, the bed cannot go back on because we're gonna go, go ahead and situate our fuel system over here, probably like I said a million times, but um, I'm gonna cut the hole, and then we'll move to the fuel system. So one, one, my biggest problem, I think, with this hitch, and it's happened on every single one that I've had, that Andy has had, I've taken them apart, and it's really just the finish. Now, you can see it's got this gray powder coat on it, which looks good from afar, and I'll go up close and show you some details, but I honestly think, and I've worked for a powder coater before, I've been around powder coating before, I know the steps involved and the way you make powder coat last and become a very durable finish. And that is just like everything else with the frame, it's in the prep work. And the powder coat finish on these hitches is just, it, it's subpar in my opinion, it's, it's subpar. Now you can kind of see just from the packaging, it's already chipped off. And you can kind of see, if I pick this with my finger, you can see like there, uh, let me see, get it to focus here. That looks like it's literally just machine cut with the bar stock. So there's no prep. They're, they're basically cutting and bending these pieces out of probably clean steel, not, you can see there's another piece right here. I can probably pick that over here. It's, it's really noticeable. Um, and, and they're really not etching this stuff. Yeah, see like this is all pretty much bare angle iron that they probably, and then the reason why it's chipping is because it's dirty metal and, they, and they're not prepping it. Let's see here, I could probably pick some of that off right with my finger. Oh, look at this, yeah, over here, look at this. Yeah, it's because it's dirty, 
metal that's not cleaned or prepped or sandblasted and I'm sure if you're mass producing a product I have no idea what that involves but I do know what a subpar finish looks like and that would be this I'm trying to yep I'm gonna I could pick off this whole piece if I wanted to ow under my nail so that's my biggest that's my biggest thing with this hitch is that uh, I'm gonna end up trying to find some you know get the edges that are bare and exposed and try and recoat them so it doesn't happen but if you put this on your truck just like this which most guys obviously are gonna do and I would say six months to a year if you drive your truck during the winter time and in you know all the road grime and shit it, it just gets in there and that powder coat finish is gonna go to crap so we're gonna throw some coating over it I'm not gonna spend the time to uh, powder coat that on top of everything else I just don't want to delay any further getting this truck done I'm not really gonna drive this a ton during the winter but that's my that's my biggest gripe with this product all right, so moving on here, the part that everybody dreads the most, drilling your hole. All right, so what they want you to do, they want you to go from the edge of your bed right here, measure up, and then just span the two wheel wells, get the middle of that, go in that, and then there's your center point. So 45 and a half on a short bed. So we're gonna drill that hole. Like I said, we're gonna leave all of that loose once we put the bed back on. If we need to shift over just a hair one way or the other, I should be able to do that just in case this is not dead perfect and we can scooch it around. And uh, yeah, here we go. And there we have it. We have a hole in the bed. You can actually see how much further forward. It's not even, it's pretty forward of the center of this bed, which is kind of kind of surprising. I did measure about 75 times just to make sure, but you can kind of see. There's the wheel well, there's the center. It's kind of it's kind of forward. And you can kind of see here too. It's here's the center of the wheel. It's definitely center. So you can kind of see short beds, why they have such a disadvantage of towing, you know, for clearance wise of the cab, uh, that hitch has to be a little bit more forward. So a couple of the other things that, um, number one, that we're gonna have to do is, I forgot that we need to get airbags. So we're gonna get an airbag kit for this, probably the same one that I have on my other truck. We're gonna install those airbags and uh, the transmission cooler, which you can kind of see is just chilling, hanging out now actually mounted to the underside of the bed right here and this might actually be interfering with the mounting of that i won't know that until we get the bed back on here to remount that but that actually might be moving um actually a couple questions a couple people asked me about the trans cooler been over this a couple times but it is a derail double row cooler if you go to derail's website and go to like fluid coolers this has like a 33,000 BTU. It's got the fan. It comes with everything. Um, it is like a double stacked unit. Has served me very, very well. All the way in the back here, I have eliminated all of my other transmission coolers. That's the only one I have, and I have not had too many issues with that. Uh, the other question that I saw in the comments was about these Flexolite fans. Now, here's my take on the Flexolite fans. I love them. They're awesome for most of my applications. I would not put these on my tow rig. Now, I've done a lot of research and this is all other people's opinions and they could be wrong, but from what I was reading, the CFM that these things put out, now they do have high and low settings and they are a nice powerful unit, but what people were saying is the stock fan clutch, which you can kind of see over here when that baby kicks on, this is moving a ton more air than even those electric fans. So you can kind of see there's a 
factory stock unit, but the fan clutch and the stock fan apparently do move a bunch more air than these Flexilite fans. So if you're not doing a whole lot of heavy towing, um, go for it. I think they're awesome. I think they're great. It's a well, it's a well put together kit. Um, and definitely gives you a lot more clearance to get in and around your belt area, the front end, you know, front of the engine. Most trucks, you can't even barely see any of this stuff. Uh, so it's, it's nice to free up some of that room and get some of that stuff off the front of the truck. But they're not as, not as powerful as stock, a stock fan clutch. So there's my opinion on that. I'm trying to answer some questions that you guys have uh, been asking me that I keep seeing. So the, I know those were two big ones. guys up real quick we got the fuel tank back in the truck cleaned up whatever little dirt specs were inside the fuel tank pretty much nothing was in there but clean that up got that back in there and we are ready to reassemble got the uh, fuel sender uh, got that cleaned up a little bit and got our new beans sump underneath there the single fed bean sump uh, I did see a couple questions about the GNR fuel sump why we weren't going back with that as you can see we were using this for a dual feed sump we basically machined out the whole inside of that the standpipe that would be here for the return uh, we pretty much notched completely out so this was strictly a dual fed sump for two lift pumps uh, we're not going to be doing that we're going back down to one as I've told you guys before so the bean sump it's not Nice black sleek uh, one single feed to one single air dog we'll put this on the shelf and keep this around just in case we need it for some other reason or we decide to go back to two air dogs kind of the same reason why I don't really need this mount that we made I'm gonna try and drop this air dog down as opposed to having them up but I'm gonna leave the bracket I'm gonna leave it just how it is just in case we do decide like I said to go back to a dual pump system sometime in the future I don't see it but in case we do we have it everything's kind of here ready to go back so we're now ready to just throw all this stuff back on here run our uh, new feed our new return and throw the bed back on that's pretty much it so it is 7 30 now i actually do have dinner plans for this evening that i cannot miss so all of that fun stuff we'll have to wait for tomorrow tomorrow we will probably get to some of the engine assembly uh, more parts are funneling in miscellaneous stuff here and there so we'll get to that and we'll keep keep pushing keep pushing ahead on this bad girl um, but that's going to do it for this video hit that thumbs up button for me if you would i will see you guys tomorrow see you